Hello, sir. Hi. What's your first name? Rob. Rob. Yes, sir. I'm John Hall. This is my wife, Heidi. Pleasure to meet you. Tonight I'm attending and was a guest speaker at the Badger Battalion's annual ball. Yeah. Which is an event that they host to honor the accomplishments of their graduating seniors and to thank members of the community who support the ROTC program. To the cadets. I graduated from West Point in 1994 and began a career as an infantry officer but seized an opportunity to go to civilian graduate school when I was invited by the history department at West Point to come back. Taught at West Point for three years and while I was there I worked nights to complete my PhD. Now obviously the topic of today's lecture is the interwar period. And then in 2000. Eight learned that the University of Wisconsin was renewing its search to fill an endowed chair in U.S. military history and after some deliberation decided that this was my dream job. That uh, as much as I loved my army career, this was the one job that I was willing to leave the active duty army for. So we have Lucius Fairchild's vest from the Civil War. But I was particularly excited about the prospect of teaching people who, some of whom are going to go into the military, but most of my students are never going to go into the military. But this is an important part of the human experience. It's an important part of American history. What I recommend that you do is head down to the second. As a U.S. historian and native Wisconsinite, I'm, of course, deeply interested in the history of the state. Okay, good luck. And I had an opportunity this spring to teach a new course, new to the history department, that's called the History of Wisconsin in 100 Objects. It runs all like straight across. I wonder what that means. So right now my students are conducting what I'm calling a library scavenger hunt. They just look for civil war. In this internet age, they're very familiar with using Wikipedia or do, using other internet searches to find information. But here in this room right now, they're finding rare documents, archival collections that are housed here at the Wisconsin Historical Society. The gloves are over there. They need to do their own digging in the primary materials, which is sort of the raw materials of history, the unprocessed, unrefined original documents, diary entries, letters, official government documents, and those sorts of things, and that's what they're looking at here. And when it comes to the benefits of a liberal arts education, and I don't know that I was particularly crazy about taking poetry classes when I showed up at West Point. I wanted to be an infantry officer. I signed up for all of the most manly sort of uh, martial electives you could possibly take. Advanced hand-to-hand -hand combat, rock climbing, every military history course I could. And these other liberal arts elements of the education were sort of imposed on me. And those were the most valuable parts of the education I received. Bringing things out of the stacks because they taught me or they conditioned me to think deeply and critically about things that I would have never even questioned otherwise. All of that stuff is in here. And I would say having been an educator and been an active duty army officer and now reserve army officer, I think the national defense uh, and, and the security and future of this nation are as important very much with education funding as they are with the defense budget. I, I, I view these investments to be absolutely essential to the strength and uh, vibrance of not just our economy, but our entire society going into the future.